using Claude Code has completely changed my game development workflow. Hi, my name is Daniel. I come from a 3D art background. I've worked uh, as a lead 3D artist in traditional games development studios. And I really wanted to create my own game. Writing code has always been this thing that I didn't quite enjoy doing, but I do like developing games. So I am a tech artist, but I don't like spending hours typing out code. And one thing that's been really nice for me is I found a workflow that I find very fun to do where I just speak in Cloud Code and develop my game as I go. This is the first time I've been actually able to play a full floor of the game that I'm developing. So and I've been doing this about six months where I've been using Cloud Code pretty much full time every single day. So the video is going to be broken down like this. Uh, the first early section is me just showing the playthrough of what have I built so far. And keep in mind, everything you see in this video um, has been so developed by me and I d have not typed out any lines of code. I do direct it and I'll show you what that looks like at the uh, closer to the mid section of this video. I'll show you my actual workflow of how I'm going to add this new feature for potions. I save my energy and my hands for art because art is pretty extensive because I'm making all the art in this game, especially on the 3D side. It's hard for me to emphasize how amazing it is to have AI coding tools like this. Sometimes I, I'm working solo and I'm like, wow, there's just so many bugs. And because I've worked in more traditional production with larger teams, more actual teams, I know it always feels that way. So if I didn't have that experience, I would be very discouraged because I'm like, this whole thing is so buggy. But knowing that that's just how it is when you're developing, it gives me ease and comfort as I keep polishing and reducing the bug count. I think my main takeaway is the game changer for me is a tool like Claude Code. The thing it does that I appreciate the most is it makes me enjoy the process so much more. I keep wondering, this workflow is so much fun, but I can't imagine it working in a team environment because so much of what I do is, I don't feel embarrassed doing when I'm alone. But if I was in a team and I was like talking to my laptop and giving instructions, that's my favorite workflow is like talking and then just coding that way. I can't imagine being in like an open space office where every developer is just sitting right next to each other and everybody's just trying to talk. I, I could just imagine myself talking into a prompt and then someone to the side of me is also talking and they're, what they're saying gets injected into what I'm trying to say. It would be extremely frustrating, uh, at least my workflow. My workflow is very tailored to how I like to work when I'm just by myself, solo developing. And I think that's the one of the amazing things about AI coding is there isn't, uh, I mean, there is a right or wrong, but really it's whatever you need to do that works for you. My workflow with Claude Code, it's something that works for me, that makes sense to me. But if someone else tried to read my code base, the way my art is structured, it would make very little sense. It'll take them a long time to ramp up because it's just me. I don't have to put so much effort into making sure that everything makes sense to everybody else. I've done this before uh, working as a lead three artist where so much of my energy is creating systems that allow for easy onboarding. Like when you get a new team member in, how easy it is for them to ramp up. But if I ever had to hand this off to someone else, it doesn't make sense. The way it's designed is very unique and it's very, I would say artsy. A lot of my setups, they are designed what you would expect a 3D generalist to design a game if they were to try to design a game where it makes to, sense to them for debugging. Maybe this is a, a little bit of a tangent, but I find that sometimes I have to adjust my workflow. Sometimes what makes sense to me is not in the training data. So if I get too novel with my implementations, I'll never be able to use AI because the AI just reads it. It's like, what, is, what are you doing? Um, even though for me, it might make sense. Sometimes I, I, I've realized there could be cases where even if I'm working in a way that is legitimate or could work, 
if the AI's training data doesn't have a lot of that to sample off of, the code base can get a lot more buggy. Like you see, the game's working. I, I can see myself, if I, I've been working on this game for about six months now. And so much of the early process was, I have no idea what I'm doing. The first three months was just figuring out a workflow that actually worked. And then the next three months, I feel like a lot more was being done. And now I feel like I've, I've kind of figured it out. If the AI tools never improve, um, they're good enough now that I can build most AA quality games. And to me, I, I look at what I'm building and from a quality perspective, visually, it feels like AA quality, at least visually. I, I know those terms don't really mean much because it's like budget related, but I do feel like when it comes down to what I'm building and what I've seen being built in other studios that I've worked for in the past, this feels like I'm building something AA even though I'm solo. I like architecting and designing and um, directing, but not actively coding for hours on end. And I think um, just being able to do less of the things that I don't enjoy, uh, it's amazing what that does for feeling, um, feeling so much more enjoyment when developing this game. I've heard this thing talked about um, quite often by other developers, oftentimes real developers. But I say I'm a, I'm a real developer, but I, I just mean like actual programmers, people who they come from programming first and probably not much of visual artists. They keep talking about this idea of mental map. Like they can't, when they're using AI, they can't build a mental, is it mental model or mental map of the code base or what's going on? For me, I can relate to that. But also, I'm not really certain if it's necessary. As a sole developer doing art, animation, rigging, um, directing, design, all of it, I'm not even sure if it's physically possible for me to actually have a, have a complete map of the game. I've been 3D modeling for I don't know, a long time, just since like 2008. Most of the stuff, I can't tell you off the top of my head what to do. Usually it's like, while I'm 3D modeling, I'll remember things. It's just too much information. Maybe that's because um, I'm, I've been a journalist for a long time. It's like impossible to remember everything. And I, I feel like maybe having that crystal clear, like mental map of your game is unnecessary. Now, this might just be completely off, but I feel like so far I've been able to get really far while still feeling like very foggy on the details. But I do find that that's one of the criticisms of using AI because it moves so fast. It just it just pumps out so much stuff that if you're not reading all of it, it just feels like it goes um, out of control. And now that could be the case. And when that happens, I have to slow down. Maybe that says more about me than um, the technology and how people are going to use it. It works surprisingly well when I feel like it shouldn't. And I think that's my main takeaway. Let's go to clock code. So this is my design sheet. So what I can do now is copy the file path and bring it over to here. This is just a template that I use for working on new tasks. If you're interested in what this means, there is a video that I created that covers um, the system, it just allows me to spawn sub-agents and get a more thorough implementation. Um, I don't want my potion system using existing infrastructure. I don't want to couple it with other systems that could potentially change. And while I'm only making three potions for this initial pass, in the future there could be hundreds of potions. I don't want to deeply tie them together just in case in the future I want to change one without changing the other. 
Given this feedback, I want you to rerun the orchestrator research again with this new additional information. Please, um, when creating a lot of these um, managers and controllers, assume that all of them are going to be attached to the UI canvas that contains the potion elements. Basically, currently the plan is that there's going to be a potion canvas. And from there, within that, there's going to be three potion sprites within it that get updated. And this is just for the player collects the potions through a reward in the game. But where these scripts are going to be living in, they're just going to uh, live in our static UI and our don't destroy and load prefab. There's going to be a section in the UI section on this that's persistent throughout the whole game. And that canvas portion is where I'm going to place all of the scripts related to potions on there. That way, you'll always have access to the three potion slots that I currently plan on having in my game. Thank you.